true. Um, so Zika, you are, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, um, you are a VP at Cisco. Uh, and among many other things, you are the company's lead on the country digital acceleration program. Um, and you're also one of the pioneers in the establishment of cross-border work with the Palestinian innovation ecosystem. Um, with your permission, before we dive in, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the facts and figures. So we have something to uh, uh, grab a hold of. Um, we know that today there are 13 Palestinian universities that teach ICT related courses, leading to about 3000 ICT related graduates per year. We know that more than 350 ICT related companies in the West Bank and Gaza are providing a full spectrum of IT and business process services. We know that the Palestinian ICT sector contributes to around 8% um, of Palestinian GDP or $637 million. We also know um, what was mentioned that there is currently a lack of anywhere between 10 to 18,000 programmers in Israel. Um, we know that when contrasted with other outsourcing destinations, the Palestinian tech sector often brings a uh, comparative advantage um, in labor costs and proximity, um, the infrastructure that is already there, cultural similarities, language skills, um, and talent, of course. And so if we take all of that into consideration, um, we can understand that cross-border tech cooperation can address uh, a pain point in Israel's uh, tech sector, while also reducing Palestinian unemployment uh, and building, importantly, building mutually beneficial business partnerships. Um, and that today there are already um, companies including Intel and Oracle, Mellanox, Microsoft, Nokia, Western Digital, Wix, HP, and of course, Cisco, um, who have already capitalized on the opportunity. But it's important to say that Cisco was actually one of the first um, to join these dots uh, and start promoting this kind of cooperation. So tell us, um, how did it all start? What is the history behind uh, Palestinian outsourcing in, in Israel, what was the vision? Um, how, how, how did it all start? Okay, so um, it was uh, in 2009, beginning of 2009, John Chambers, then the CEO of Cisco, um, came to Israel as a guest of President Perez and uh, to launch uh, uh, a few uh, initiatives that uh, we did together. And at, on that visit, we went with him to Ramallah to meet with President Abbas. And then uh, John Chambers made a commitment that Cisco will invest uh, $10 million in, in trying to build a new model for job creation in uh, Palestine, in the West Bank. And um, uh, as the commitment was made, we uh, actually, President Abbas selected people from, um, uh, from the Palestinian government and the private sector to be a kind of uh, an advisory board for us. And uh, we started talking and uh, trying to figure out what it means and how you do it. Um, and as we spoke with our uh, Palestinian partners, they, they said, you know, we've been your, your neighbors for quite a while and we've been uh, uh, kind of looking with wonder at what happened to Israel, how Israel has become the startup nation. And they said, maybe you can help us become a startup nation as well, because when you look at the starting, uh, starting points of Israel, we are very similar um, in more than one way. Uh, the best, uh, you know, we, we don't have uh, nat nat natural, uh, natural treasures, but our best uh, natural treasure is our people. Um, and the same is in Israel. And uh, that is a very important building block to establish a high-tech industry and the startup nation. So um, we thought that sounded like quite a, uh, a big vision for us to to help uh, create uh, an, a, a similar ecosystem for the startup nation. So I'm gonna try and do something. Uh, if, if it's okay with you, uh, Yodena, I would like to share uh, a slide. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, let me see. Um, because um, I don't, I, I wonder why the slide I share is, the, is always the last on the list, I wonder, if you can see it. Not yet. OK. 
okay, just a second. Meanwhile, I'll say that uh, for such a, a, a big vision, we thought we should probably um, uh, come to, to the West Bank and learn about uh, the ecosystem that we all talk about. And what I'm looking for is the slide of the ecosystem to share, just to, to, to be sure that, um, that we can, uh, uh, can all see what we're talking about. So in order to have a thriving high-tech uh, industry, and uh, you need all of these building blocks that are connected and build the ecosystem. And we thought if, if we would like to make, uh, to help uh, the Palestinian to become a startup nation, we should come and see if there are any building blocks already there in place, and we should get to know the, the Palestinian ecosystem. So, um, uh, we decided that we'll go to Ramallah and see, you know, meet companies and understand the ecosystem. And we decided we'll, I'll, we'll go I, with Yuval and Yoav that uh, led the uh, R&D for Cisco Israel and the investments for Cisco. And um, as, we, as the day for us to go to Ramallah approached, uh, my two friends came and said, you know, we, we are coming with you, but to Ramallah. But we did not uh, we did not tell our, our wives that we're going to Ramallah. So um, we're putting our life in you, in your hands, and that was a little bit. Uh, um, it felt a bit of a pressure. So I co I contacted my Palestinian friends, and they said, you know what? If it's such a um, if it's still you're not familiar with the ecosystem, let's. Let's meet in Jericho because Jericho, there is a hotel which is maybe 100 meters um, away from the checkpoint. So if anything bad happens, you can run back to the checkpoint. So we decided instead of Ramallah, we'll go to Jericho and we all got together on the day and uh, drove down to Jericho and got to the checkpoint. Um, but as it happened, it was, uh, um, a day before a Memorial Day here in Israel, and there was a, a closure on the West Bank, and there was no entry for Israelis into the West Bank, and no Palestinians could come out. And uh, we were standing there a bit, uh, you know, hesitant, not knowing what to do. But then the soldier at the checkpoint called us and told us, you know, don't despair because, like, half a kilometer from here, there is a gas station which is a no man's land where Israelis and Palestinians can meet. So we went to the gas station and there in the gas station, we met uh, um, with the entire ICT sector in, uh, uh, in Palestine. And that's just, uh, there was a Bedouin tent that we rented for the day. And within this tent, we met around 20 companies. Um, we met entrepreneurs that we were really impressed with that said um, that they have good companies, they have good graduates from the universities who can, um, who can provide R&D services to companies around the world. But when, th when these Palestinian companies are trying to offer their services to, the, um, to, to international companies, they say, mm -mm, you know, this uh, Palestine is a conflict area and we cannot take the risk. So they've asked us, Cisco, to start outsourcing work to Palestinian companies and actually help them change the image of Palestine as a place that is open for business. Um, so that sounded like a good uh, plan to us. And we started, uh, uh, we selected uh, three companies out of 20 companies in Palestine that we started outsourcing work to. And that was very successful. Within a year, we employed 40 Palestinian engineers that are still working for Cisco today, that's 10 years later, and uh, um, a few more joined. And this was one of the, of the building blocks of uh, the ecosystem. We also helped invest in, uh, um, in, a, in, in a venture capital fund that uh, uh, Yadin uh, established uh, together with Said Nashef, and I see he's speaking after me, so he's probably going to tell you about that. Yeah. Uh, Zika, though, can, 
Can you do me yeah. a favor because we really want to see you. So can you can you unshare the screen again? Okay. So see you. All right. Um, Just press and uh, there you go. Yeah. Oh. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So so let so, me. So let, I stop talking. Yeah. You have an opportunity to ask me a question. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to take the opportunity. So. You gave us this remarkable um, backstory of how how this all began, and and it began in in most significantly in two thousand and nine, um, and since then things have developed and grown. Um, what is the situation today? Uh, you started talking about that a little bit, um, and more specifically, uh, what are what are the opportunity opportunities for the future as as you see them in this kind of cooperation? So um, I would say that, uh, you know, it's, we started outsourcing and we kind of selected a few building blocks out of the ecosystem to invest in, but everybody else as well participated in the efforts. Um, the, the, the thing, and, and one of the things that we uh, thought was our duty is to share our success with other international companies. And for that, um, we recruited USAID, which is important. And this is a part of what should make it more successful is creating a coalition of different entities that have an interest because USAID could uh, come in and help other companies to come and invest and try outsourcing and uh, help with mitigating the, the initial uh, risk. Um, and that was very helpful and that helped the growth. Now, I think that one of the things that are required is um, a, a construction of a coalition of uh, stakeholders that are interested in, in having um, you know, the, uh, the, the plan that is on the table today, um, collaborating businesses with the government, with other entities together to, to set the, the vision that uh, Chemi and Ami stated so well, and to work together towards it. And I'll say one more thing that uh, I think is important. I think from, from the point of view of the business, um, it was, we played a different game. It was a win-win because we want good, good employees that uh, deliver on time and work well with us. And, and, and that, so we, we won, and the, and the Palestinians that work with us won because They've learned how to work with an American company and many companies uh, sprinted, sprouted out of, of the work that we've done. So um, that, is, that, that is a different kind of game of a win-win rather than the political game that is being played of a zero-sum game where whatever I win, the other side loses. And I think we can change the game and play a win-win game across the board. That is that is very very significant, and and President Paris always said that for him peace building is win win. So that's ex extremely significant. We've got probably another minute and a half left, but I, I do want to ask you uh, another question. I think it's important to say we're talking a lot, and we'll continue to talk about about outsourcing. That's the the point of the conference, and there's a, a lot of potential there. But but that's just the beginning, right? It it it, it shouldn't it shouldn't stop. With, with that, there's there's room to, to grow. Um, there is room to grow. Absolutely, there is room to grow. And, uh, um, you know, the work that we've done, I actually, in this one minute that I have, I will tell you that the work that we've done in Palestine with the Palestinian uh, partners was, I would call it manual today, because today we've developed an application and a digital way to connect and actually, you know, the Corona crisis kind of uh, expedited it. And now you could work, uh, people who, who work from home could work from home in Tel Aviv or in Ramallah or, you know, across the region and you could be a part of a team and collaborate and work together. And we, we also have the technology to enable that. Zika, as, uh, as always, you are absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing Thank and taking Dave. the time to be with us. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye.